Okay, someone wants to know how to make a spindle. You basically want to make something that rides along a 50 millimeter diameter pipe. I'm not 100% sure on how to do that, but here is how... Oop, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted. Oh. That was sitting in the way. <laughs> okay, so... um. Here's how I would do that in Tinkercad. Let's create a new design. Okay, so we want a 50 millimeter diameter. Let's make it as smooth as we can. And we're gonna put this on its side. Bring it down to zero. Okay. Next, we're going to bring in a cylinder, which you want to be. I'm going to make it 50 millimeters tall. And we're going to make it what you wanted, 100 millimeters in diameter. All right. Maximum number of sides. Turn this into a cut. Um, I'm going to align these this way. I'm going to click on this, hold on the shift key so I can move it on a single axis only. And I'm going to bring it in until I get the cut that I want. Let's leave a little bit of meat on the top and bottom edge there. Now, what I want to now do is uh, you're not going to get a perfect circle, but you should be able to get pretty close. Let's figure on trying to make it 64 like the um, software does. So I believe that's five degrees. So 360 divided by five. No, I'm sorry. 360 divided by 64 is 5.62 degrees. Um, let's see, 360 divided by um, 60 is 6. So let's use 6 since we can type that in very easily. So the first thing we're going to need is a master ring. So we're going to put down a torus, make it as big as we can. And we need to center that torus on the um, cylinder in the middle. So center, we're going to select the cylinder so that it does not move. Now the master ring needs to be the biggest thing on the table. It is, you can see the shadow here. It's the biggest thing on the table. Now, duplicating this many times is gonna really piss off the software. So what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna do 12 degrees and then I'm gonna select everything, join it, and then move it six degrees. I think that'll work. So select this and this, control D, Zoom out so we can see the damned entry box, which is still off the goddamn screen. There it is. 12 degrees. And then just keep going. All the way back around. If in doubt, go all the way to center. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hide a single master ring and get rid of all the duplicates. We're gonna hide our central ring, or cylinder. We're gonna take this whole thing and join it together as one unit. If Tinkercad gets too slow on you, ooh, that actually looks kinda of cool. I might be able to do something with that shape for other things. Boy, that makes a really nice bevel. That was actually pretty quick. So I'm going to gamble. I'm going to duplicate this once and then rotate it six degrees. Okay, that gets me my 64 degrees. We're going to bring everything back um, and we are going to select the master ring. We're going to hide it and then we're going to select all this and pray I don't crash Tinkercad into oblivion. There you go. 
now you have a, that, that actually worked pretty fast now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over here I'm going to export this and then I'm going to re-import this There's a reason we're doing this, and that's because this shape, every time you use it, every time you duplicate it, every time you copy it, is going to include all of that. It's going to remember the history of all of this, okay? So I just detached that on purpose so that I know this is my original working model, and this is my dead model or my simple model. This is a complex model. It's made up of whatever 360 divided by 12 is at 72 of these cylinders um that's very very complex you copy two or three of these into a model and you are going to kiss your tinkercad workspace goodbye because it's not going to like that this however is just a simple model as you can see i can't separate this i can't break it apart this is a dumb model it's a plain simple model file and it looks nice and clean to me so I'm good with that. You can now copy this into your workspace as many times as you want. So what you do now is you do not, this is not your primary workspace. This workspace is now the 50 millimeter pipe pulley. So this workspace is now dedicated strictly to this part right here. You do not build your model in this. You select your model, you copy it, and you go into a new workspace, new design. And now you paste your simplified model into your new workspace. Paste. There you go. Now you have your nice simplified model that you can put into your workspace. It's 100 by 100 by 50. And then I made the cutout here that perfectly fits a 50 millimeter 64 segment meaning the maximum resolution tinkercad can do um pipe this will roll on okay. that's how i would make that pretty easy not hard and if you need to edit this if you need to make any changes to this you go back to your pipe pulley workspace and you can make your changes to your original model here if you need to if you need to make this bigger or smaller or taller or shorter, or if you want to bring this in tighter, whatever you want to do. So, for example, what I might do here is duplicate this again, bring it over here. Okay, then I might take this and segregate it. So now I have my individual pipe pieces. I didn't realize it was going to be that separate. <laughs> So the trick now will be to select just that piece. So we can just start deleting chunks here. There we go. So let's start deleting chunks, deleting chunks until we can get a hold of the one piece. Are we missing the one piece? I think we are. Uh, well, we should be able to correct for that. Delete. 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 This should be off by just six degrees. Yeah, there it is. So now we have our pipe piece. So this is our early um, model. This is our finished model that's not combined. This is the simplified model that we have not... Um, that, that we've simplified by exporting it and then re-importing it so that it does not have all this history attached to it. Um, so now using this, I can modify this and then do the same thing again. Put a master ring around it. So select the master ring and a known circular object. Center on that object. And now I can rotate this a different number of degrees after I've modified it or changed it. If I want to make it a 40 millimeter pipe or a 30 millimeter pipe, or if I want to make this piece a different size, whatever you want to do to it, you could do it here. And then repeat that entire action. I would do what I did again. I would do it 12 degrees, rotate it all the way around, merge it all together, not including the centerpiece, duplicate it, rotate it six degrees, 
that seems to get a pretty nice smooth surface more than usable that's well within the bounds of the limits of tinkercad and your printer itself and go from there so and then what i would do is i would leave this here if i wanted to make another one i could probably make a second one maybe a third one in here but if i wanted to make a fourth size i would open up a new workspace because as you your workspace gets more and more complex tinkercad will start to introduce errors into your model because it can't handle the calculations because it basically redoes the entire workspace every time you do a model so if i were to do a 50 if i wanted to do a um, 40 millimeter pipe pulley i would select all of this copy it and go to a new workspace called 40 millimeter pipe pulley and start again there this way i don't corrupt this workspace by adding too much to it but there you go there is your simple pulley because this is perfectly round it would be pretty easy to put you know uh, a shaft going through it so if you wanted that to roll on top of something or whatever you know that'd be pretty easy to do because now that this is a simple object you're not going to run into the complexity corruption issue that Tinkercad has when you start adding too much to Tinkercad. So leave this as your workspace just for this. Start a new workspace. Import your simplified model, meaning the one that you exported and then re-imported. You can either copy it in here or you can re-import it from the one you downloaded. Um, either way will work. What you do not want to do is you do not want to bring this model into your primary workspace because after you add two or three of these to your model yeah your um your, your software is going to throw a shit fit because remember this is 65 pieces this file right here this this file right here before i exported it is made of 65 individual parts so if i want to put four of these in a model that's um 260 parts that's going to piss off tinkercad this is two parts the imported pulley and the cylinder going through the middle of it so tinkercad treats this as one simple part which is why you're going to want to make sure you do that um otherwise that's it again create your master ring make sure your master ring is bigger than the total surface area because tinkercad does a revolve around the common center all right, as you can, well, I can show you. Watch what happens if I try to rotate this. Okay, see how it's moving? See how it's revolving around a common orbit? That little red dot is where it's rotating around. But that's not where you want the part to rotate. You want the part to rotate around this common center. See how it's not moving? Well, the only way you can do that is to give it a new common center. So I took this master ring, just a torus, I scaled it up larger. It's a maximum of 100, but if you need it bigger, after you've made it 100 and maximum number of sides, you're going to select this control point while holding down the shift key, and you can make the whole entire thing bigger without moving its position. So you can make that as big as you need to. And then what you do is you select the part you wish to revolve around the center, and then you select the master ring, you hit control D, and you put in your value. So in our case, 12 degrees. Oops. That wasn't supposed to be that way. Duplicate 12 degrees like that. And now it's going around the center of the entire object instead of the common center of the two cylinders. And then you just keep it in control D. Don't go too fast or you'll lose the duplication. You know, make sure it finishes each one. And make sure you get all the way around. One more. There we go. Now, each time you duplicated that, it also duplicated this master ring. So you select one, hide it, and you see it's still here. There's a whole bunch of them here. There's 32 of them there, okay? So you select them all, delete them, bring your master ring back. Now you only have one again. Again, you got to try to keep the parts count low so you don't piss off Tinkercad. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select the master ring and select the cylinder. We're going to hide it so that we only have our big old funky ring here. And we select that, join it into one piece. This is going to take a while because I'm adding a lot of parts to Tinkercad now. And this is what you want to try to avoid. Um, maybe this is enough resolution if it is, but it, it, it did well with the 64, so I would go with the 64. And now we take this, we duplicate it, 
and we move it half of what we already did, six degrees. That gets us our 64 parts. Now we bring back the cylinder. Again, we're gonna hide the master rings. We don't want that to be part of our model, and we join. Once you join, inspect the model for imperfections. Because remember, now I have 130 parts on the screen here. I have all these parts and I have all these parts. And there is a limit. I don't know what the limit is, but eventually you're going to add so many parts that Tinkercad's going to flip its shit. And you don't want that. You see, it's taken a lot longer to do this one. That's because it's got all these over here. All right, but you get the idea. That's it. It's easy as that. Now we come in here. We inspect the part. You're looking for lines that shouldn't be there. You're looking for chunks missing in the model. You're looking for parts of the model that were supposed to be cut but are still there. And our model looks clean. I don't see any flaws. And what you do is you export this. Once you export it, you can then delete this extra one because you still have your original here. And then you import it, and you have a nice, clean, simplified model. That's how you can make a nice, complex shape, and as well as how to make your perfect 50 millimeter spindle that should sit perfectly. You might want to add um, a tiny bit of give to this. So probably the best thing to do is to model this perfectly and then scale it in the slicer a tiny bit if you need to. Or after you re-import this, maybe scale it a little bit. So maybe make it 50.4. This way you have, um, I'm sorry, I did that wrong. This one here, 50.4. Maybe increase all three of these dimensions. So hold down the shift key, select 50, go 50.4. This way the whole thing scales up a little bit bigger. As you can see, this will be a little bit bigger too now. Oh, it's not, I didn't do it. I probably let go of the shift key too soon. But you may want to scale it just a tiny bit to make sure it fits right or just control your flow rate. So if it's too tight, reduce your flow rate a little bit. If it's too loose, increase your flow rate a little bit. Um, cause you, cause you might not want it perfect. It might, it might try to grip the pipe if it's too perfect. You might need a little bit of wiggle, a little bit of tolerance. So you'll have to decide that when you make the model. But there you go. That's how you make a spindle. And that should print cleanly. The only thing I don't like is how far in I made it. I might not have this cut be as deep as this because this is going to be a tough overhang to print. I mean, it's not impossible, but that's a tough overhang right there. You might be better off if you want that much interface. You might be better off cutting this model in half. So, for example... We know it's 50 millimeters, so we just make this 25. And that is precisely half. And now I have a half a cylinder that will print near perfectly. And I just print two of those. Or move this outward some. You know, don't have it go in as far as I did so that this angle is not so steep here. Like I said, this part here will print fine, but the top half might not. The reason I would split it in half is because now it's both bottom halves, and it'll print just fine. Um, it's the top overhang that's the problem, not the bottom underhang or overhang. Um, you'll have to decide. You'll have to test it, see how far you can push your printer, do it as your material, cooling, etc. See how you like it. I hope that helps.